Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Mondays with Monday. You're looking at him, Jim Mundy, the historian for the Union League Legacy Foundation. Now, every month or so, John, Kira, and I will discuss what subjects to cover in these different episodes, because we've been doing this since April of 2020. We've covered a lot of territory, so sometimes you try and come up with something different, hopefully original, but equally of interest, nonetheless. And as all of you know, if you have been watching this since April 2020, I'm pretty much into architecture and stuff like that. So today's episode is going to be on lost spaces in the league. I'm calling it lost in space. Pretty snazzy, huh? Original, nonetheless. So uh, we'll be looking at either rooms that no longer exist or spaces that are still there but have changed their use over the years. And this could go on for days. So uh, we're really limited to just basically uh, what I would what we would think of today as the Broad Street building. Uh, and specifically on along the Sansom Street side. Uh, some of the spaces aren't there anymore, they're, or they're there, but they're looking very different today. So um, let's start and see what we find. So of course, to do all this, we're going to do a share screen because this is, you wouldn't want me to talk about this without seeing what I'm talking about, right? And I wouldn't want to do it either. So let's do our share. Voila. All right. I really got this far. Can I get to the next step? Come on. Here we go. But diggity dog. It still, <laughs> it's a, I, I'm always amazed when I do this right because <laughs> I've done it wrong enough times. All right. So here we are, lost in space, looking back at lost rooms in the league house. Now, we're not going to do very many, uh, just a few. Uh, because uh, this can stretch out over the next year, I guarantee it. But let's start small and see what we find. All right, so here we are. On the left-hand side is the full block from Broad Street at the bottom to 15th Street at the top, Sansom on the right, Raven on the left, and this map dates from 1897, a map or floor plan, if you will. So as you can see, the league only occupies two-thirds of the block itself. Right? It wasn't until 1910 that the upper third of that floor plan, if you were in the block, would be filled in with Horace Trombauer's first 1910 edition. So we're going to concentrate on the lower two-thirds of the building, specifically on the right-hand side, okay? So I would draw your attention to the right-hand uh, part of the screen, if you will, and you will see uh, towards the bottom something that says Colonial Room, all right? Now that's on the first floor of the Broad Street building right now, but we're going to go down one floor, and roughly there's no floor plan for that floor, so I have to give you the first floor to give you some idea, all right? Now, today, you would know the Colonial Room as the Wi-Fi room, because again, you can see the old cafe right there, which is still there. But let's take a look at the outside of the house, and this is what the building looked like in 1908, all right? So that's Broad and Sansom, Sansom Street, running along uh, from the center along the right-hand side of the screen itself. And what we're concerned with in terms of space. All right, so we're on the first floor in the very corner. That would be the North sitting room. So there's the first two rooms, uh, the two windows, all right, on the Sansom Street side. The next three windows are the old cafe. And then you get the next two windows, all right? That is what then was the colonial room, but is today the Wi Fi cafe. All right, so we're going down a floor. And you can see the windows there right at street level, and they're still there, all right? That, in 1903, was the accounting office. Plain and simple, but look at those ledgers. You know, we still have some of those ledgers around to this day. So that's the accounting office as it looked in 1903. Now, um, clearly not very fancy schmancy, uh, very simple, practical, bookkeepers at work, by and large. And the space, was still in use in 1978 when I came to the league because then it had turned into an upper staff dining room. So in 1978, you have to think of the league as still being very Victorian uh, with an upstairs and a downstairs staff. And because I was the associate archivist and part of the library committee, uh, or back then, uh, I was considered upstairs staff. And so in this room, in the space, a little, little different as you can imagine, between 1903 and 1978, this is where the upstairs staff, as we were, so it would have included the general manager, Dan Raymond, though I never saw him eating there in the, in the three years that this was open when I first came here. 
Uh, but the mid-level managers were in there, uh, secretarial staff for the mid-level managers and yours truly. And we ate off the members menu every day, Monday through Friday. And it was fun. But it didn't last forever because by the early 1980s, the economy was such that the league was really cutting back on all of its operations and this room disappeared. Well, it disappeared in terms of views. It later became a silver storage room for uh, the food and beverage operation, which the, the a la carte operation basically, but also some banqueting. And what did it turn into? This, pretty amazing, isn't it? All right, so this is cellar 62 today. Right, and you can see in the very bottom how the stairs go down. All right, which means this is a two-story room. So the space that I'm talking about is just on the upper level. That is the top half of the room itself, right? Where on the right-hand side, you see the, the wine rack. And on the left-hand side, you've got the lights, but you can see a window there behind those behind the uh, the chandeliers there, if you will. All right. So that was one of the windows that you just, that was in the original accounting office that became the upper staff dining room because there was a floor there once upon a time. So uh, so before the league went in through its um, strategic plan called Vision 2000, which called for creating these new dining experiences and spaces, those were actually two rooms. So the bottom half where the dining tables today was occupied by what was then a storeroom, but had been originally the ale vault that then became a cigar vault and then became a storeroom. And then when Cellar 62 was opened, uh, oh geez, by now, Oh, uh, not quite 10 years ago, um, they took out the floor and created, rather than having two rooms, they had one room. And so that's what you're looking at today. So you can see how spaces are lost or just at least repurposed and reused. So pretty neat there. I, th I thought it was pretty neat. Okay, so I hope you do too. And who would have thought, right? So let's move on. And what do we find? Uh, just a closer view, but now you get a better look at that window. And you can see where the floor would have been just above the railing. That is where the floor would have been. And you see those um, kind of like a string course of wood along there. And that's it. So, okay, here we go. Now, the accounting office, since we're talking about accounting, after that, it went to the third floor of the 1911 Trumbauer section. All right. Anybody recognize the space? Members, if you use the third floor at all, you get off the elevator, you turn to your right, and what do you hit? See that staircase on the left-hand side, that landing? Okay, what is that today? I'll keep you guessing because I'm going to show you. Now, just for what it's worth, uh, the gentleman in the right-hand corner in the front there was um, Howard Welch. And when I went to the league in 78, he was the controller, and that was when they spelled it C-O-M-P-E-R-O-L-L-E-R. And then who behind him, not the gentleman off to the right, but to the left, that was Al Haig, H-A-U-G, and Al was the assistant controller at that point in time. And they both worked, they were both lifers, kind of like me. Uh, they both had worked there for many, many, many years. Uh, both retired. I think Howard's still alive. I don't know about I don't think Al is. All right. So where what is this space being used for today? Now, again, keep in mind, if you look along the right-hand wall there, what do you see? Three semicircular spaces. All right. Because there you are. This is what it looks like today. But looking in the other direction. So I am now standing on top of that landing, taking a photograph in, of the space that we just saw occupied by those desks. So on the left-hand side, right where that leather poster chair is, that's where Al Haig was sitting. And Howard Welch, see that screen on the left-hand side? That's pretty much about where Howard Welch was sitting, right? Because inside there, you can kind of, you can't quite tell from here, but we have these three semicircles, right? So that's the one in the center. And this is the one at the far north end of the room. And so that is the space where where Howard Welch was sitting, and there is that semicircular space that he was sitting in. And where is it on the other side? Lincoln Hall. So when you go to Lincoln Hall and you look at the west wall, right, which has the portraits of the presidents from the 1950s, well, the 1960s and 70s, 80s, up to the 21st century, and you look up top over the three doors, you'll see those lunettes, those semicircular spaces. And through them on the other side is where the third floor business center is located today, right? I thought that was pretty neat. All right, moving on. Oops, it's easy. All right, so back back to this building here. All right, now on the right-hand side, at the far right-hand part of the 
the illustration, the photograph, right? You can see that it's basically a three-story addition. Uh, you'll have those semi, those those um, circular arch, round arched windows on the upper floor. That's the second and third floor. But beneath it, have those other windows, right? So keep in mind the first floor is elevated above street level. And what did we have in there? We had the billiard room because that whole section was called the annex, and it was the first addition opened behind the original 1865 John Fraser Clubhouse. Uh, the architect for the annex was another league member, Theophilus Parsons Chandler, and it is probably no coincidence that the annex opened in 1881, the exact same year that, that Chandler became a member of the Union League. My, it's interesting how those dots connect sometimes, isn't it? So on the first floor, we had the annex, and you can see how, even though there was a new room to the left-hand side called the New Cafe, all right, but along the annex, see all those heavy black lines that indicates that those were load-bearing walls or exterior walls once upon a time, and that's what they were. And this is what the billiard room actually looked like, all right? And obviously the pool tables are gone. Well, the room itself is, is different today. I mean, this is the space occupied by 1862 by Martin Hammond. How do you like that? How do you like those apples? In the meantime, you can see the gentleman sitting on the bench. He was actually the pool room attendant at the time. And he's sitting on a bench that back then had cane seating, but and we actually have one of these in storage, and it is upholstered at this point in time. So pretty neat stuff there. All right. Now moving on, we have assembly hall. Okay, let's go back. So above the annex, the annex is on the first floor. Assembly hall, right? Is that room on the right hand side with the round arched windows? So it's a two story room. Okay. So here we go. That's assembly hall. Pretty spectacular, isn't it? And I believe we're looking from west to east. So we're looking towards Broad Street. And this photograph dates from 1887. So you can see the lake has already purchased the chandelier from 1881. I say chandelier, I should have said gasolier because it is a gas fixture at this point in time. And though it has changed over the years as it became electrified, it is still basically the same structure, if you will. And then off in the background, behind the chandelier, we have a minstrel's gallery. That's where music, that's where the band would play, uh, the musical band for dinner dances and things like that. Off to the left, you might recognize that painting hanging over the doorway. That is Henry Clay by John Nagel. And it's a little too hard to tell what the painting is off to the right. But given the darkness of it, I'm guessing that that is actually the Daniel Ridgway Knight portrait of George Gordon Mead at Gettysburg, which would kind of connect with, of course, Henry Clay, two mid 19th century figures. So, of course, Clay, a politician, died in 1952, and Mead, the Union hero of Gettysburg, the Battle of Gettysburg. Okay. So, look at that wonderful, you know, fireplace and mantle over it. Wow. What a good architecture. And you can see those chairs. Believe it or not, now those are the chairs that were purchased for the room in 1881, and we still have four of them, again, in storage, believe it or not. And when I came to the league, in, again, in 1978, they were still being used in Lincoln Hall up until the mid-1980s, if not even a little later, believe it or not. So we, the league certainly got their money's worth out of those. So this is 1887. This is 1902. All right, same view, but obviously they've gotten rid of the Mistral Gallery. Fireplace is still there, little race platform in front of it. There's a bust on top of the mantle itself, and it's pretty much the same room, right? But by now, the chandelier is, uh, they began to convert part of it to electricity by now, because electricity was introduced to the League House in 1888. So, so that's, that's Assembly Hall in 1902. Look at that beautiful copper ceiling. And all the painting, you can see all the other paintings, some of them portraits in the room. And then we go to, 1903. And this is actually the Founders Day celebration and dinner. You can see the head table on the left hand side. But just look at all the lights and the flags and just how magnificently it's decorated. Just wonderful stuff. Now this now the room itself no longer exists obviously because this this annex as well as the one to the south of the you know the, the new cafe those were torn down to make way for the Howard Trumbauer 1911 middle section. So this space has, uh, is now occupied by today's Lincoln Hall. Okay. All righty, still with me? Still interested? I put anybody to sleep yet? So here we are, back to the 1908 photograph. And I'm showing you this because, all right, we're gonna look at the floor plan. 
Next, this is the original 1865 floor plan from the May 15th edition of the Philadelphia Evening Bulletin. And this is the only floor plan we have of the building, the first, the first two floors. On the left-hand side, we're looking at the right-hand side. Along this, you can see how there's a center hallway or infilade. And look on the right-hand side, you'll see parlor, which is today's north sitting room. You'll see reception, and then director's room and an office. So in 1885 and 1886, those spaces were reconfigured. They were expanded. They were pushed out to the right-hand side so that we had one consistent um, uh, building line, if you will, exterior line. And that's what we saw in the, in the previous photograph of the outside of the house itself. But look at the office. So there was business being conducted on the first floor of the Broad Street building and all this time, and there was an office. And that's where members would go. Right, so this is what the office. Uh, oh, here we go. I'm sorry, mea culpa. So by 1897, obviously, well, well, in 1885, and, and uh, the league began to reconfigure that part of the hallway, and that's when those three rooms, the, the top two rooms, the office and the secretary's room, were converged into the old cafe. Then this, what had been a reception room, had, is now the secretary's office. And also, if you take a look at the Flemish room up top, we're going to see that shortly as well, because. After the secretary's office moved here, all right, after 1886, it would then move uh, in the 20th century into the Flemish room. So let's see if we can track this down and follow it. All right, so here we go. So that is what the secretary's room looked like because if you look through the opening on the right-hand side through that doorway, and that doorway, by the way, is still there, that is the north sitting room. So if you walk into that room through the door off the hallway and you turn to your left, that's the doorway that you will see that leads to the back of the bar in what is today the old cafe. All right, so that space is all different. Now, do you recognize the gentleman on the right-hand side in the portrait? That is George Boker, and that portrait uh, um, by Matthew Wilson can now be seen in Founders. But look at that beautiful cast iron, that, that ironwork, the grill work there. Magnificent. Wish it was still there today. And the window that you see back there, all right, um, that would be today's penalty box. But anyway, let's keep going. So here we are. Now we're in the Flemish room. All right, let's go back up. There it is. Okay. So again, on the right hand side, top, it says Flemish room, the colonial room, today's Wi Fi room. We'll do that one later. But the Flemish room looked like this in 1902. And it's still the ladies' dining room. Remember, it's ladies' dining room from 1870 until 1910. So this is the ladies' dining room. Right? We're looking east because if you're in that room today, which is the Cafe Meredith, the fireplace, obviously the mantle and the over uh, the fireplace and the overmantel are gone, uh, replaced by uh, modern versions of it that were installed in 2005, 2006 when the whole first floor was redecorated. And so that doorway, actually that wall, let's go back up is still there okay let me go up ahead and look in the left hand side above the word office you see passage okay so that's the hallway that existed at that point in time it's still there in 1897 but you can see the door there all right underneath the word room because that's what we're looking at in that photograph but as we know that wall is not there anymore neither is that passage because in the, in the early 1950s, it was turned into what they called the front office or the main office, if you will. And I'm not sure who that gentleman is. It, it could be Al Wilkin, but I don't think so. Because when I came to the league in 1978 on May the 15th, uh, I expected to become or work in the archives right away. But instead, I got I got kind of sidetracked into the main office because um, they needed the help in there. And so I spent at least two summer months working in that very, very space that you see there behind that big giant counter. And you can see they've installed a wall there, right? So you walked along the main hall, you made the turn into what had been that passage that led back to the colonial room, today's Wi-Fi room. And then on the left-hand side would have been then the Flemish room. And now it's the front office behind, because if you go through, now that's just a drywall that got put up in the 1950s, because they cut, the, they split the room in half. And if you went through that door, you're in the restaurant office. And that's the room where Mr. Bill William Deal, D-E-A-L, uh, that's what he right talked about, because he was the director of food and beverage at that point in time. And he'd been an old ARA guy. Um, 
employee for years and years before he came to the league. Anyway, so that's the main office, the front office, whatever you want to call it. And, and obviously that desk would disappear, that wall would disappear. And what would it become? There you go. Who would have thought? Pretty amazing, isn't it, though, that, that you can take a room and do so much with it, both from its original appearance to its 1950s appearance as, a, as an office space, and then to today's modern Cafe Meredith, which is spectacular. So uh, I think I pretty much got the same angle we were looking at in the previous photograph, right? Um, so there's the fireplace that was created when the room was uh, redecorated in 2006. So it, was, it looks a lot like the old one. And rather than mirror, we have a painting as an overmantel, and that's today's modern Cafe Meredith. Pretty neat, I think, anyway. All right, so that, I hope I didn't take too long to do that. I always get in trouble when I go too long. I don't get in trouble, but let's just say I, I have a tendency to talk too much and, and dig too deep into the weeds. But nonetheless, I hope it gave you some information today that about spaces and rooms in the league house that were there once upon a time, aren't there now, or if they're still there now, look very, very different than what they used to look like. And the rooms are being used in some cases for the same thing, like food and beverage. So, so anyway, so that's our, I'm sure that's only our first episode of Lost in Space. Uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you found it intriguing. Uh, we'll do some, there's plenty more to do, believe me, uh, about some of these rooms in the house that, that are or aren't there anymore. So we'll see what happens, All right? So stay tuned for episode two, but our next episode will be about Union League presidential portraits because we're about to unveil a new one in just a few weeks. So um, this is Jim Mundy, historian, Union League Legacy Foundation, signing off saying thank you for watching, especially if you've been doing it since April of 2020. We appreciate it and stay well, everybody. Stay tuned and thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>